And new microphone prowl is here for the next Bedrock Guide episode. That's right. I got a new mic. As we finished with last episode, we got this beauty right here. Look at it. It's magnificent. And it has Fortune 3 and mending on it. So can you guess what we're going to do today? Now, with today's mining, the main objective here is to get a lot of diamonds. And believe it or not, the diamond level that you've probably been told is an absolute lie. It's not true. I will be showing you the best place to get diamonds. Now, I want to go work our way from the top down. So we do actually have other ores that we need to get as we work our way down. So first of all, individually speaking, coal and emeralds. If you want to mine them up, the higher you mine, the more likely you are to find coal and emeralds. And then next down below them is going to be copper. And copper is going to be most common at layer 48. So we could make something right here at about level 48. But if we want to get ourselves the most copper, emerald, and coal, somewhere about negative 54 is going to be the best area as long as you're not in a location that's likely to hit ocean or water. Now, we do have water that way. It's not very deep, so I think we'll be okay. But what we'll do is um, we will get ourselves a little spot. Let's see. I'm going to put myself a block right here, and I want to be up at about 54. We're going to make this into a, a nice little mining area, and then we're going to see if we can find ourselves some copper, some emerald, and some coal. Okay, so I have carved myself a nice little area here. I wanted it to look kind of decent and we'll probably end up decorating this thing to make it look really cool. And we'll probably do that to every single layer, I think. But for now, this is how it looks. And we're gonna talk about branch mining. I'm gonna show you the best branch mining technique out there because there's a couple very special things when you're branch mining that you're gonna wanna do. Now, this is just me making a tunnel for aesthetic purposes. You don't have to make your tunnel anywhere near this big. This is just for us, this is just for me. But this technique, you're gonna use this anywhere you mind as we go through this episode, whether we're talking about coal, emerald, and copper we're going for now, or whether we're talking about the diamonds and the redstone that we're talking about when we get all the way down to the bottom of the world. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have at least five blocks in each direction for whatever like tunnel branch that you're mining. And you're gonna mine a two by one uh, little path like this. And if you can get yourself into the swimming position by putting water up here and then just kind of like sprinting into it you'll see you'll go down you'll get inside of here and now we can mine in a one by one method like this now this is technically the best way to mine because you are exposing the most amount of blocks with the least amount of effort every single block i break i expose one two three four five blocks so if you want to do things the most efficient way you could do things like this but the problem with this method is is now if i want to get this down here i'm going to end up in this not swimming crawling position anymore so i don't like it it's very um inconvenient so we're not going to do that we're gonna do the more typical two by one fashion like this right here. So what you wanna do is just keep a too tall hallway wide enough for just your body to fit in. And then you're gonna keep mining. And then every time you come across stuff like this, you're gonna mine it up, but that's not all we're gonna do. If we wanna get the most ores for the amount of space that we're mining, what we wanna do is we wanna make little poke holes. And I'm gonna go in, I don't know, about four spaces right here. And I'm gonna put a poke hole right here, just like that. And I'm gonna turn around. I'm gonna put a poke hole this way, just like this. And then I'm gonna skip one, two, three blocks. And I'm gonna put another poke hole. Now, if you're trying to find the most amount of ores for your time, this is gonna be the best way to do it. I could tell you, typically speaking, you're probably not gonna to wanna to do this method unless you're looking for diamonds. And we're gonna do this method for diamonds in a little bit, but I wanted to show you it now so you have this tip nice and early. Ooh, look, we found some iron here. We're gonna we're gonna like dig in and get that. It was just, it was just a single piece. Bruh. Now it's always good to go in both directions. So if you make a haul in this direction, you wanna make one in this direction too. But I have a pro tip for you. Most of the time, you guys are probably not gonna make a big tunnel like I am. Your tunnels are just gonna be like this. And you're gonna be doing your branches off in this way. You're gonna be doing your branches off in this way. But the problem is, is if you do your branches like this, when you're traveling back from the end of a long branch mining session, it's really easy to not realize that you just ran past your central tunnel. And you end up going this way too too far and then you kind of get turned around you're you, you're wondering where where how do you get back so pro tip for you instead of making your branches directly across from each other do something like this make them uneven that way 
whenever you're coming across, you're running this way, you know, okay, I am back in my main hallway and I can head out. Um, but instead of me doing more time mining here, I want to show you guys the next mining tip, which is going to be the best place to get iron, lapis, and gold. We're gonna dig down a little bit further. Now, in the meantime, before I can do more digging, my pickaxe is getting a little low. And if you're down there constantly mining, you know, redstone and lapis and diamonds, and you're you're down there, you're probably gonna be okay. Your pickaxe will probably mend itself up because you get XP from like mining those ores up, right? But we're not always mining those ores right now because I'm doing a lot of digging for the tunnels and things of that nature. So our pickaxe is running a little bit low. So since we have mending on our pickaxe, we got that in the last episode if you didn't watch it go check it out instead we can now mend up our pickaxe by trading so i'm gonna get myself all the sugar cane right here i'm gonna convert all the paper and i'm gonna use my villagers here as a way to get early game experience points so i just walk up to this guy right here and a pro tip that i got from my video editor moonstone was that we can trade a little bit faster just by right clicking to trade here and it will constantly keep going and filling it up with whatever materials we have for trading so you see there we actually just max traded right there we got a little bit of xp on our pickaxe here it'll help us go a little bit longer um, later on we'll get more trading with uh, crops and things of that nature and it will make this whole process a lot easier one nice part about digging out little hallways or tunnels like this for decorative purposes you would swear that i staged this look we got gold iron lapis and copper all together i told you that why level six was a good one that we could find all these things here and this is proving that it's probably going to be the like maybe the best general level to get things you're not going to find diamonds here but if you're looking for all this other stuff why level six is a great place to make your branch mines now, I got another pro tip for you as we're here at Y level six. Now, I haven't really started going down my tunnels yet. This is something you're absolutely 100% going to want to do. If you're going to go with this approach that we're going with in our world here, which is having multiple levels or multiple tiers to mine for different things until later on when we get some automatic farms. And that is to set up some form of like temporary storage at each level. That way you don't have to go back up to your main storage just to continue mining. So what we're going to do here today is I'm going to, I guess, like make this area over here. It's kind of like a little work station i don't i don't have anything else to put here for now so we'll just put this down and then i'm gonna specifically make myself a few chests here or should be good for now and then i'm going to place them over here and then i can now use this area back here for storage so as i go through and fill up my inventory with all these different bits and bobs and things then i can clear them out to be able to continue to do my mining without having to go topside and i can even separate things out like over here i'll put all my valuables all my Whereas over there, I'll put all of my blocks. Now, my recommendation for everything except for diamonds is going to be when you're going through and you're mining your branches. And remember, unless we're doing diamonds, I'm not I'm not doing the poke hole method. I just wanted to show it to you guys a little bit earlier. We'll do it when we get down to diamond level for sure. But whenever you're mining through here, you're going to come across cave entrances like this. And I 100% recommend you go through and explore them. Because if you want to have the best chance to get yourself a lot of ores without having to wear down your pickaxe and really in the shortest amount of time possible, Possible, this is going to be how you do it now just oh hello now just make sure you don't get lost as you go make sure you always place your torches on the right hand side that way you can easily find your way back by following them on the left but depending on the caves that you find this could be a very profitable way to go through and get yourself a lot of stuff in your world And yes, I did just kill him with a pickaxe because my sword broke. Oh boy, oh boy, I just found something fun. So I was doing a branch out here on the iron level and look, oh, I don't have a weapon to fight them. Uh, this will be interesting. Uh, let's see what we can take about. Okay, he's gone. And there's another one up here. We found a spawner. I don't remember. Did we already find one? I can't remember. I get this series mixed up with the harder core series for some things, but it, even if we did, this one's so much closer. So we're going to probably end up using this spawner, I would imagine. Uh, I'm just gonna get the things out of it that we like want or need and yeah, that's super awesome. We're going to make a skeleton spawner farm out of this in the somewhat near future. This may be one of our first like XP farms in the game outside of our villagers up top. All right, so we finished two of the layers and we do have one more layer to go. I got a bunch of stuff smelting right now and it does not take long to get so, so, so many ores. We have a lot already and I've really only mined maybe collectively for about an hour or so. But now, now it's time to go down to that diamond layer. You want the pro diamond finding tips? You want to find a lot of diamonds in your world well it's about to happen right now let me show you 
Here we are, Y level negative 54. Now, some of you are gonna say, yeah, those are diamonds right there, all right? Some of you are gonna say, but Prowl, it, you actually get more diamonds if you go lower. You wanna go to like negative 58. To you, I say, you're wrong mostly. Yes, technically, the lower you go in the world, the more frequently you're going to find diamonds, but, an actual practice of you going through and like digging out your tunnels, that's not how it's going to play out because there is a localized, like, you know how in the overworld you have a water level, I think is what is it, 64, right, or 63. Well, lava has the same thing. And the localized lava level where lava will spawn in is at negative 53. So if I'm at negative 54 and I'm digging in right here to make my tunnel, I will run into lava, but it'll be right in here. The lava will be down here. Lava being down there means that I can take a bucket of water. Scoop. I could take a bucket of water and I could just put it down on the ground like that and it'll get rid of all the lava for me. It'll cover it over and make it obsidian. If I'm like down here, like digging, right? Let's say I'm doing my tunnel down here, a little bit further down and I'm digging, I'm gonna dig straight into the lava. That means the lava is gonna flow into me. It could hurt me or kill me. Ow! That scared me. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die from lava. I'm gonna die from lava. I'm gonna die from lava. Water. Woo. But more than anything, it just means that I, I can't use this branch anymore. I have to give up on this branch and go to another one. Or I have to like try to find a way to dig around it. Basically, it's going to waste a lot of your time. So for the time that you lose wasting by running into lava all the time at the lower Y levels, it actually makes finding diamonds down there less efficient. You will find them less often because you're finding that you're dodging lava more. Let's get these diamonds, by the way. What are we going to get here? Boop and boop. Oh, here's another one. Diamonds will be in veins anywhere from about one to sometimes upwards of nine. I think even 10 is technically possible. And they're always gonna be grouped like that. They will kind of like group together like this. And then you could find another one here or here or like here, like they're usually gonna be attached. So whenever you find diamonds, it's always a good idea, kind of dig out some of the blocks around where you find them. And we'll do that as we go through and we find a couple patches of diamonds together, just so you guys can kind of see. But it's actually gonna help you make sure that you don't miss any diamonds. Now also remember, when it comes to making our little, our little tunnels here, we can reach out five blocks. So we want to go out, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So I think we wanna stay in here, right? Let me check my reach, yeah. That'll get, that'll reach us right there. So no, we want to be right here. So now as we go through, we dig our tunnel here, we are going to 100% do the poke holes. So I'm going to dig through. Oh, I did go in too far. Let's move over one more. So now that we're in the right tunnel, this is the way that I like to do it. Okay. I like to just go through and I'll do a branch for a pretty long time. Like we'll go through for a little while here and we'll keep going and going and going until I feel like turning around. And then when I'm on my way back, that's when I'll come back through and I'll do my poke holes. So I'll do this. And I'll do this. And we're just looking for diamonds or if you want redstone or anything else, then you'll you'll dig in and get it. And I'm going to skip one, two, three. And on the fourth block, I'm going to dig in again. This is going to be the most efficient use of you mining because you're uncovering the most amount of blocks here. And the three block gap just helps you make sure that you're more likely to see diamonds that maybe like bleed over from one side to the other. Basically, it's going to help you from overlapping when you're digging in if you find diamonds on one side. Look. There they are, right there, right there at the end of the tunnel. So now that I found some, I'm gonna dig in, and we're gonna dig this out. That's one. Okay, here's two. Now see, that, that could be all, but it also might not be. Look, there we go. Here's three, here's four. And then I doubt there's any more, but we'll just kind of poke through. We're actually like into our little base area here. Looks like we're good. And then I'll usually throw a torch in here somewhere. I mean, we got one right here. Uh, just to make sure that no mobs spawn in here and come out and blow me up or whatever. So now I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna do a little digging. I'm gonna show you guys a couple extra tips along the way just to make sure that you're finding the most amount of diamonds and having the easiest time doing it. Okay, now we have found our next set of diamonds. Now, whenever you find diamonds in the ground, to be 100% sure that you don't have them burn up, you should always dig underneath them. That way you can make sure that somehow, some way, there's not lava underneath those diamonds. And sometimes lava can even be like in the walls around it or something too. So it's just like a good general habit. Definitely dig around your diamonds kind of expose them on all sides to make sure that you don't lose any. As you can see here, we're safe on these. We just found ourselves four more diamond ore that's gonna get us a bunch more diamonds. Oh, 
Another pro tip for some of you guys that don't like to waste these uh, blocks that you're dropping in here, you want to keep those, right? You use your pickaxe to mine it, it's there. Maybe you even need a lot of deep slate bucket of water just like this it'll flow all of it to you and can i reach it to get it back out i cannot for some reason there we go i think there's some kind of like bug in the game right now that makes it to where if your like head is in water it's not letting you scoop the water for some reason so i think if i do this yeah we can scoop it back up just fine and right here is the infamous lava pool I'm telling you about right there. Y level negative 53. We could have dug straight into that or even under that if we had been mining a little bit lower. And that could be kind of deadly or at the very least, very wasteful and annoying. So now that we're here, all we have to do is just place down that water bucket as we get closer to the lava here. And uh, it'll keep us safe and it allows us safe travel, safe passage over. Now, while I'm here, I might as well say one little bit here, which is you may be wondering if there's other good ways to to mine for diamonds and i'm gonna say generally speaking no there's not because if you're out in open caves and i think i mentioned this in the earlier episode where we did a little bit of caving um but like if you go and travel to open caves like this you may run across some diamonds but honestly they're going to be fairly few and far between because diamonds have a lower rate to spawn exposed to air than they do when they're obscured or hidden behind blocks so we're actually going to be much less likely to find diamonds in areas like this where there is air exposure. So it really makes it not worth it to make that a primary method of finding diamonds. If you're going caving just for fun or for other like materials and such, then sure. I think it's worth it to, you're gonna find diamonds along the way sometimes and you definitely wanna grab those. Also, any tricks that you've heard that work on Java edition for finding diamonds, like ones that have to do with like diamonds being close to like lapis, if you like move in this direction and go down this many blocks or look underneath mushroom blocks and things like that, those things are typically not going to be true on Bedrock edition. And I would just implore you anytime you hear a good, cool new trick for finding of diamonds that feels like or sounds like it's too good to be true it probably is too good to be true for bedrock edition and really a lot of that stuff changed on java edition as well when they changed the world land generation anyways it's just a little extra tip for you guys to carry along with you okay so i've done my first set of mining here and I say first set because my pickaxe is getting low. We need to go repair it. But look at all of these diamonds we got. We are wow. now rich. This is probably the result of maybe 30 to 45 minutes of mining at the most. We got 60 diamonds out of it, which is great. So what are we going to do with those diamonds? We're going to come over here. We're going to make a helmet, a chest plate, uh, some leggings, some boots. We're going to go over here. Let me make some sticks. So that way we can also make a sword, an axe, a shovel, and yes, even a hoe. Now with the power of video editing, we change oh yes this feels good now don't go anywhere because i have a couple final things that we need to go over and also i want to transform all of these places to make them look good so i need to go do some more mining on a different level really quick to see if i can find something to show you guys as one final little bit and we got to do a little transformation around here okay i have a little side note here for you guys this technically goes with the last episode but i needed to do something for my decorative purposes right now i need another fortune book now i need an anvil and we are going to enchant our hoe with the fortune three and the mending because i want to get myself some dark oak saplings and we'll do a whole episode on trees but i just want to show you guys this since it's relevant right now that if you want to get extra saplings which is really important for dark oak because they don't usually drop a lot of saplings you could take a hoe really any tool but a hoe breaks leaves faster put fortune three on it and you'll get more sticks more apples and most importantly in this case what we want is more saplings sometimes one dark oak tree will only drop you about three saplings most of the time they'll drop four or five but here we got ourselves eight so now we know we're not going to run out all right and for now i decided only to do the diamond area i'm going to do the other ones as well but i didn't i didn't feel like getting to that for this episode because i want to get this out for you guys but i just wanted the area to look kind of like neat and it looks like we have some like shells for things to go they're, they're just like stairs in the wall um, so i can't actually place anything on them but i don't know it just kind of felt good to have some type of texture in here um, i wanted the diamond level the negative 54 i wanted this to really feel like it was pristine and nice so we used the smooth diorite and we got tile floors and we used the carved stone on the walls here of course we got to go big we got to go big we got diamond blocks down every tunnel here and i even put some 
underneath the chests. Was it a waste of diamond blocks? Absolutely not, because it looks really cool and I like it. And then what I'm going to do with the other layers above the uh, like combined iron layer and then the uh, coal slash copper layer is they're going to kind of get progressively like less cool looking and less pristine. So they may be a little broken up, use materials that one may look at and think are quote unquote cheaper and things like that. Um, and I'll probably do that between episodes. But for now, if you enjoyed this episode, please leave a like and comment down below. I want to hear your tips and tricks that you use for mining. What are your techniques? Did I miss anything that you think is a good tip? Drop that comment down below and let me and everybody else know. And if you enjoyed this episode, remember you can leave that super thanks down below. Those donations help to keep the channel going or grab a membership. I appreciate everybody that watched today for sticking around this long and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.